In this third station, we're going to be observing clean water and soapy water on a penny. All right, so let's look at our penny here. We notice that our penny, if we look at it and if we feel it, there's a little bit of a rim on the edge of our penny. And that's very similar to the rim that's on the edge of a cup. All right, so here's our clean water that we got out of our tap. And we can see here that this clean water very easily makes a nice drop as we squeeze our pipette. So we're gonna come down here to our penny and we're gonna carefully see how many drops of water we can add to our penny. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it took 14 drops and we see that after 14 drops that our penny wasn't able to hold any more water. All right, so if we were to look at why that happens, we notice here that as we put our drops of water on our penny and we get our penny all the way filled up with water, we notice that if we look at it from the side, we can actually see that dome of water build up there on that penny. And so that dome of water there is happening because the rim of our penny, you've got adhesion and cohesion. The water is able to adhere to the rim of the penny, and then the other molecules are able to cohere to cohesion to stick to those water molecules, and that gives us that dome. All right, well, polar water with a positive and negative side is gonna be able to stick to things. Well, let's look at soapy water. Well, the soap now has broken that polarity. And we see that it doesn't even make as big of a drop of water as the clear, clean water did. So let's see what this does on our penny. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We see these smaller drops here. We see that it overflowed. But if we look at our penny here, notice that we don't have that same dome of water on this penny as we did on our clean water penny.